resting in the finished work, but the rest is a finished work. This was inspired by Pastor Creflo Dollar. Try sitting. There remains to rest. Rest. A rest. For the people of God. For the people of God. It's a promise. A promise of peace. And listen, everybody. We got to guard this promise. And we must guard it with our heart. We must labor to rest.
Come on, by faith. Come on, by faith. Faith takes possession of what grace provided. Now that you know that it's me. The just shall live by faith. Come on, by faith. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. No more stressing. Come on, by faith. Let's go. Ted and Sherry. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 When I was younger, I didn't understand it as much when they would say I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. But now that I have a little bit more wisdom on me, I understand that there's something about the house of the Lord. There's something about gathering together. There's something about being in the midst of God's presence and his people. And Hebrews exhorts us and it says, fail not the assembling of yourself together, especially as you see the day approaching. And as we see storms and wars and rumors of wars, we know that the day is approaching. We don't know when soon is, but I told somebody the other day, soon is coming. I don't know when soon is, but I know soon is coming. And God is coming soon. Hallelujah. I want to read this morning a familiar passage of scripture from Proverbs 3. I want to read. I'm going to read down to. Verse 8. Now, although it says my son is talking to my daughters too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind thee about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. This is one we're very familiar with. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. 
and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel. That means thy inside, thy body. And he shall direct thy paths. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, this morning we come and we thank you and we praise you. And we give you the glory. For God, we acknowledge that you have kept us through seen and unseen dangers. God, we thank you for letting your mercy follow us, oh God. And it is your mercy that has sheltered us from things that we deserve. God, we just thank you and we praise you, God, that we look like mercy. Hallelujah. We look like your mercy because you spared us and kept us. As we come this morning, we welcome you to have your way from start to finish. Every word, every song, every exhortation, and even the preach word, oh God, have your way. We thank you for meeting the needs of your people. We thank you for doing what only you can do. God, someone has come in today and they're not feeling the best. God, touch them. God, someone's coming in heavy laden today. They're just worried and they're stressed. God, lift it today in the name of Jesus. God, somebody's coming interceding for their family. God, touch that family today. God, someone's coming, standing in need of provision. Thank you for being the God who owns it all, who has it all, who say you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We thank you in advance because you're a promise keeper and you're faithful. We thank you and we praise you. God, I have prepared, but I thank you that you shall preach this morning. And you shall say what your people need to hear. For your word is a light to our pathway and a lamp unto our feet. And we thank you and we praise you for giving us your light and your presence in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. There is none like him. Hallelujah. There is none like him. None like him. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Who else would give us his body and his blood and say, do this in remembrance of me. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. His blood, which was shed for the remission of sins, his body, which was broken for our redemption and for our restoration. Hallelujah. It's just a reminder of how good God is. Every time we take this cup, Something in our minds to say it should have been us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But he took it all. Yes. It should have been us. Yes. It would have been us. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. But thank God he took it all.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for yet another day. Another day that the Lord has made. Oh, Lord God, there's nothing that we have done that he allowed us to assemble ourselves. But we thank God for his grace and mercy. Oh, Lord, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend, Lord. Church, church tell your neighbor, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Hallelujah. We come and we come and give honor to you. Uh, and first of all, let us just gr greet you with, uh, with our Father in Jesus' name. We just thank you, Lord God, that you have allowed us, Lord God, to assemble ourselves, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you reign in, us, in our lives, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for sending the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that guides us, that directs us in all our ways. Truly, God is good, and he's faithful, and he's worthy to be praised. Come on, give God a hand, praise, hallelujah, for he is worthy, hallelujah. And as we begin our devotion, we're going to open up our devotion with our scripture. We're going to ask you now to stand for the, uh, the entrance of our pastor, amen. Come on, let's give God glory for the shepherd of this house, hallelujah, by way of Elder Pastor Hardy, amen, hallelujah. At this time, we'll have our scripture. Amen. Scripture will be coming from Psalms 27. Those who have the Bible, they can go there. And we will start from the first verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? 
when the wicked, even my folk, enemies and my foe, come upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host shall encamp about against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise, though war should rise up against me, this will I be confident. One thing I desire of the Lord, that he, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, I'll say that again, in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, and in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies, around about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifice of joy. And I will sing, yea, and I will sing praises unto the Lord. I read you six verses from Psalms 27. May the Lord have blessed to his red word. May it be food for our soul. Food for our soul, not only food, but also give us strength because there's so much trouble in the land today. But well, he said, fret not, fret not. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah, sorry. You know, when we do our outline of our hymn, we know that this is what brought St. Matthews through the years. Hallelujah. We shall not forget where we came from. Hallelujah. Because he is a friend. And our, our hymn is 340 on this morning. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Why? Because all oh, because we do not carry everything. I said everything. Everything to God in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. What a privilege to carry everything to God. forfeit oh what needless pains we bear Never be this 
discouraged, take it to the Lord in prayer. We everybody to stand even if you're at home hallelujah in honor of this hymn amen are we weak and heavy laid on combo with a load of care Thank you. We thank you this morning, Lord Jesus, for the for the allowing us to get up this morning and allowing us to come into the household. Lord. And we thank you for meeting us here. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you for meeting us at the door. 
meeting us in the parking lot, Hallelujah. ushering us in. Yes, yeah. We thank we thank you for for just everything that you've done for us. Yeah. We thank you for keeping our families yeah. and those that lost loved ones. Yeah. They're in the cares of God. Yeah. We hope that they are in the presence of God right now. Lord, we just we just thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. There's just 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 so much to thank you for. Yes. Just the breath we breathe right now. Yes, yes. Every breath we take, we thank you. Yes, yes. Because Lord, millions didn't make it, but you chose for us yes. to wake up this morning. Yes, yes. Giving us one more chance to get things right. Giving us one more chance to praise your name. Yes. Right. One more chance to spread your love. Yes, yes. So we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We ask you to bless the pastor of the first family. Yes. Yes. Strengthen and keep them. Yes. As they carry out your mission. Yes. And when they get weak, yes. allow us to be able to uphold their arms. Yes, yes. And keep them. So, Lord, this morning, yes. again, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We thank you, and we thank you. Yes. We say these things in your name. Amen. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. And we all should rejoice. And be glad about it. All right. Here we are again, Lord. Yeah. Standing up, giving your name to praise. Yeah. For truly, truly, you are worthy. Yeah. You're worthy for all and everything yeah. that you did and what you're doing right now. Yeah. We're going to sing a, a song for this is the day that the Lord has made. Because yeah. we know that that is a true song. Nobody can do it like him. He did it day, day, days, and days and days. Yes. Finally, somebody came up and said, this is the day that the Lord had made. Yes. Can't nobody else do it. Nobody. Can't nobody else do it. Right. It feels so good to stand before you. Yes. Just to say a word to the congregation. Yes. Saying something that may touch somebody hard. Yes. Somebody might be going through something today. Maybe that we can say something that may fulfill your heart this morning. Yeah. That you can get something out of this service. Right. This is the day that the Lord has made. We want everybody to join in and help us sing this song. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord had made. That the Lord I will. I will. I will, I will talk and be glad in it. Oh, 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 this is the day that the Lord I will, I will be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord Oh, this is the day, this is the day, day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will, I will, I will, I will rejoice and be glad. Yes, I will. Oh, this is today I will this is the day this is the day day that the Lord well I will enter his gate with thanksgiving I will I will say it's the day that the Lord had me. I will not go again. Oh, he had, he had made me glad. I will, I will rejoice because he had made me glad. Oh, he had, he had made me glad. I will. I will rejoice 
day. This is the day that the Lord had made. That the Lord had. I will. I, I will. And be glad in. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day, a beautiful day, this is the day, this is the day, this is the day, this is the day, a beautiful day, this is the day, that God this is the day, this is the day, a mighty good day, a mighty good day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah! 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 So, somebody need to talk back to me. When I say hallelujah, somebody need to talk back to me. Because this is the day that the Lord had made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad. We are still here. We are still here. <laughs> Magnify and praise him. Wish enough to give God all that he deserves. We thank him. We thank him. We thank him. We thank him. We should should be able to hear it all over this place. We should hear it all over this place. We should be able to hear it all over. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Come on, hallelujah. Come on, give glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, he's worthy. Hallelujah, he's worthy. He allowed us to get up out of our bed this morning. He allowed us, hallelujah, to stand on our two feet. Hallelujah. He allowed us to raise our hands. Hallelujah. He allowed us. Hallelujah. He's a keeper, hallelujah. And for this, Lord, hallelujah. For this, Lord, we thank you, Lord, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, hallelujah. For giving us strength, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to drive over the highways. For allowing us to get here. It wasn't nothing that we have done. Hallelujah. But it was all that he has. Hallelujah. He said, look down upon us, hallelujah. And for that, we give a thanks, hallelujah. For that, we give a praise, hallelujah. Because he is worthy, hallelujah. Truly, we thank God for another opportunity, hallelujah. How many know there's another opportunity, hallelujah? Uh, uh, Y'all just don't know, hallelujah. We all got a testimony, hallelujah. We all got a testimony. We we been through. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah. Praise his name, hallelujah. Praise his name on the drums, hallelujah. Praise his name on the organ. Hallelujah. He's worthy, church. Hallelujah. Don't sit down on the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning I posted on Facebook. Good morning, Holy Spirit. 
Lead and guide us throughout this day. Hallelujah. Could have been dead and gone. But the Lord seemed fit, hallelujah, that we're still here. We're still here. We don't take this moment for granted, hallelujah. Because God is in control, hallelujah. If he's in control of your life, give him praise, hallelujah. If he's in... At this time, we're going to turn it to the hands of the prophet. My God, I'm like John now. Hold my mule. If you don't want to praise him, you best to get out the way. You understand me? God is too good to sit down. Sit down on me. All you want of a God. Wisdom, understanding. Woke us up early this morning. Started us on our way. And for this, I don't know about you. I don't know what you come to do. But I come to praise him. Give him the honor and the glory that he deserved. Brought me back from a mighty long ways. So to Carter, Brother Carter, and all the ones that prayed for me, Pastor prayed for me. Saints prayed for me. Mothers prayed for me. Deacons prayed for me. Choir members prayed for me. Church members prayed for me. Our officials prayed for me that I might see you again. I'm standing here. You can see me. And I'm in good spirits because of what the Lord See what the Lord has done? He, he touched me one more time. And I'm not ashamed to get up here and say that I thank him. Now, like I said, y'all can sit there and be cute. All you wanna. But if anything ever strike you, you gonna get ugly. Oh yeah. And you're going to jump up when ain't nobody chasing you. And you're going to run. You're going to shout. You're going to give him the victory. Praise God. Praise God, church. Feel good today. Feel mighty nice. Feel mighty nice today. Because he brought me back again. He brought me back again, church. And I'm not too ashamed to get up and say, he touched me. I'm not too ashamed. I don't care. I don't, I don't know what he did for you. But I can truly say, Mozetta, he brought Rosa back. The devil thought they had me. Uh -huh, but he brought me back. Lost some weight, but the weight will come back. I ain't worried about it. Nobody else has to worry about it. Because the more you eat, the better you feel. So y'all bring me your cakes, your pies. Praise the Lord, church. We're going to have a good time because the pastor got a good sermon for us. And we don't take up time just to be talking. But we want to give you honor and glory that you might be able to get into the service or what pastor I have to do for us and say, our announcements, I mean our ushers, our offering, your ushers and trustees will be coming at this time. But keep on, y'all keep on praising him. While they're coming, they don't mind it. They don't mind it. They don't mind. Just keep on praising him. Because he's worthy. I say he's worthy of all our praises. All right, it's in the hands of our operatory committee at this time. Praise God.
Amen. Amen. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. And nobody could do you like Jesus. Ain't nobody, nobody, nobody. Amen. It's offering time in the house of God. Ties offering and giving. Amen. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord one more time. Praise the Lord. Um, on behalf of St. Matthew Church again in the offices, members, we like to always say thank you. I'm going to be kind of redundant on this because you've been so generous and your liberal giving. We just want to honor you and say thank you for giving all of your needs to make sure the church continue to go on. Thank you on the behalf of our church. We love you. We thank you that you give. Because it is a blessing to give than to receive. Amen. Only why, you, why I say that, because the Bible says it. But to, to put it in perspective, when you say receive, is something that you must be lacking. So if you're giving, that must be something that you have. Amen. So even when you don't have that much, it was a lady in the Bible that gave all she had was one little mite, a penny. Amen. And you had some people that give out of the abundance that they have. That wasn't nothing because they had it. But you gave because you didn't have it. And you wanted to be a blessing unto God and the church. Amen. Because you believe that God will do, hallelujah, marvelous and wonderful things in your life. Because if you give, the Bible says, if you bring your tithes into the storehouse, he'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. Amen. That one blessing will take care of everything that you desire and stand in need of. Amen. This is, this is something here. I'm talking about giving. Amen. There's so many people that are going through, not only through the pandemic, but through there's hurricanes and there's tornadoes, the storms and um, the typhoons and everything that is going on with the weather. They lost all they had. So when you give, amen, that is a blessing. That is a blessing. That is a blessing. Amen. Um, put this down. This um, basket here. Um, this basket here is be for the offering. The pen will be for the benevolent. The tie box is in the middle is for your ties. And those that didn't um, receive your communion cups, you can get it right up here. Amen. So we have three ways to give. That is through the cash app, PayPal, and through the mail. And then we have an also we have also one way more one more way to give. That is through your appearance. Amen. <laughs> we're, we're here now. So you're giving. So you're doing it cash at PayPal and through the mail and through personal giving. Amen. It's, this side will be um, going first, then this side. Amen. And um, on the, my end, this end of the church, we have our sister, trustee Juanita Mazik. We're holding for the Devin and credit. Amen. I don't know why I'm talking so much. Um, so you're holding for the debit and credit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God, Amen. It's in the hands of the ushers. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here, come by here, my Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here, my Lord.
Oh, come on by, dear good Lord. Come on by, dear good Lord. Come on by, dear good Lord. Oh, we need a blessing, Lord. do need a blessing and the Lord have blessed us tremendously Amen. and whether you know it or not you're in for a ride you you understand how that jet go up it says fasten your seat belts because you're in for a ride all right then when the pastor get up you're in for a ride I, I'm here to tell you first lady Vale. good to see you uh-huh but you're in for a good ride. Now, I'm going to call the, the, for the announcements. Let us sit back and listen to what is being said to us. Good morning, church. Good morning. 
Let us hear the announcement. So happy Labor Day. <laughs> We would like to say happy 10th birthday to Tierra Marie Salvage on the 4th. <laughs> Minister Joyce Kirby on the 5th. Happy 13th birthday to Alvin Bailey Jr. on the 7th. Sister Charlene Minder on the 9th. Sister Pam Bess on the 10th. Elder Andre Rogers on the 11th. Happy birthday to you all of your family and your church family. Happy 33rd wedding anniversary to Trustee Roderick and Sister Virginia Younger. Happy 58th wedding anniversary to Brother Clarence and Sister Helen Bromell on the 5th. And happy 48th wedding anniversary to Brother Sonny and Sister Jesse Carter on the 9th. That's a lot of years of marriage. Happy anniversary. Love your family and your church family. Lord, whom thou loveth is sick and shut in. Sister Mary Andrews, Mother Janie Bradley, Sister Nadine Fitzpatrick, Sister May Ford, Sister Ann Gallman, Sister Marie Gay, Brother Richard Gay, Sister Mamie Grennan, Sister Minnie Harris, Sister Sadie Holly, Trustee Andrea Jackson Brooks, Sister Brenda Jeter, Sister Mary Johnson, Sister Hetty Kelly, Brother Jimmy McCoy, Sister Lucinda Neverson, Sister Willie Francis Payne, Sister Patricia Miller Richardson, Sister Rebecca Seaborn, Brother Gregory Thickpen, Sister Christine Washington, Sister Laura Williams, and Sister Francis Younger. If you would like to reach out to any of these members, you can call the church office and request their address or telephone number. St. Matthew's UFWB Church School, grab and go. Immediately after service today, barbecue chicken, fish fry, tilapia, and porgies. This is today, immediately after service. Dinners are $10 for one meat or $15 for two meats and your choice of two sides with water or soda. The Unison Free Will Baptist Church Incorporated the conference choir open to all singers, both young and seasoned. Final rehearsal will be Tuesday, September the 7th, 6 to 7 p.m., St. Mary's Church, 24 Kasu Street. The conference choir will be ministering Sunday, September the 12th at 4 p.m. The fifth annual Julie Bell Cotton Food Drive to benefit St. Matthew's Food Pantry, the church that cares. Please contribute to our non-perishable food drive for the months of October, August, September, and October. Drop off donations on Sundays by placing items in the designated boxes in the cold room on Wednesdays between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. You can also contact Brother Melton, that's Brother Quinn, to arrange a drop-off time. The food pantry has a special request for items to make up a Thanksgiving meal specifically boxes of stuffing and cans of cranberry sauce so you can call trustee irma 777 0472 or brother quinn 203-908-6728 and our other announcements we are glad to see elder may brown back with us amen Sister Moran is asking for a prayer. Um, she will be having surgery on Tuesday. General Bishop Elijah Davis Jr., 35 years, pastoring retirement banquet, Pitch Chapel Church, Saturday, September the 18th from 12 to 4 p.m. Donation is $100 per person, and this will be at Woodwinds and 29 School Grounds Road in Brantford, Connecticut. You can contact Mother Gilliam, 
203-387-2335. Mother Carr, 203-777-9006. Or Deacon Davis, 203-996-4517. Thank you to my pastor and first lady Hardy and church family. I want to say thank you for all your prayers and cards, texts. They were deeply appreciated from Elder Gallishaw and family. Your kind appreciation of sympathy is deeply appreciated and gratefully acknowledged. With special thanks, this extra special thank you note sent to you today holds more appreciation than any words can say. Pastor Hardy, Lady Hardy, and my church family, for you're among the nicest people I've ever known, and you'll never be forgotten for the thoughtfulness you've shown and your prayers. Thank you for everything. Love y'all. You are the best. Rosa Reed Dorberry, God bless. For a pastor who makes a difference, your commitment to God's word and your shepherding his people is a wonderful gift to our church. Hope you feel appreciated in a special way for all you do and the blessings you are. God bless you richly. Deacons Ministry and St. Matthew's Church family. Thank you. Do we have any visitors? Everyone's at home. We hope to see you again next week. Before I make pastoral greetings, would you allow me to be a husband for a second? Honey, you look pretty today. Yeah. 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 Pastoral greetings. I just want to uh, thank you, Deacon's Ministry, for that uh, kind card. I sincerely appreciate it. But on the third Sunday of this month, I want to uh, term that Sunday, because while I was sitting there, uh, it just kind of came to me, Sanctuary Sunday. Third Sunday in September, Sanctuary Sunday. So those people who are already here in the sanctuary, uh, keep coming. But if you have not been back, and give it a shot on the third Sunday and, and come back. And we're going to term that Sanctuary Sunday so that you would come back to the sanctuary. Uh, we are doing things safely. And so please come back and, uh, and join us on that third Sunday. And after service on the third Sunday, I believe uh, we are going to have uh, drive-through fellowship. We want to welcome members who have joined either virtually or joined here. We still want to be able to welcome them. So post-service, we're going to just have a little uh, opportunity to have the uh, people just drive through and, and shake the hands of the members just so we could welcome them. So say that with me, Sanctuary Sunday. All right. So make plans to join us on that Sunday, the third Sunday of the month. And uh, so I believe it would be the 19th. So make plans to do that. So we want to have Sanctuary Sunday, and then we want to welcome uh, and have a chance to welcome all of our members. Because in spite of the pandemic, we have a testimony that God continued to add to the church in the midst of a pandemic. So we want to welcome those uh, people. We want them to see us. We just want to uh, be able to fellowship together. So would you prayerfully consider what I've asked of you? And, and we ask that the Lord would just uh, give you the, uh, the and the ability to join us that day. Amen. All right. I believe that uh, now it is time for our pre-sermonic song that uh, Deacon Edwards is going to give. We thank our worship leader. Thank you, Minister White, for leading us into uh, worship. We thank the deacons for the time of uh, devotion and worship this morning. And it is communion service Sunday. And I said a little earlier before service started, I said, when I looked at the cup, 
it should be a reminder that it should have been me. <laughs> it should have been me. It could have been me. So when I do this in remembrance of him, it's a reminder that even if I was the only one that he was going to die for, he still would have done it. It should have been me. It could have been me. So I take this with humility because I, I know that it could have been my body and it could have been my blood. But my body and my blood would not have wiped away all your sins. It would have just been enough for me. It wouldn't have been enough for you. But because it was him, it was enough for all of us. So we do this in remembrance of him because we remember that it could have been us. Can you say that with me? It could have been us. It should have been us. But because of God's mercy, it wasn't us. Hallelujah. Because of his goodness, it wasn't us. So on this communion search, Sunday, we remember that it could have been us, but because of God's mercy, it wasn't us. Glory be to God. All right. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Clap your hands. Bless God. Thank God for blessing us to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. One more time. I actually thank God for Elder Hardy and stuff, and I, I don't mind following him. So just and piggyback a little bit off of what he said. I want to look at my wife and say, honey, you look good today, sweetheart. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures right quick. Um, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, 19 and 20, it says, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, uh, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with the price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are, the, which are God's. So we belong to God. And we have to acknowledge that we belong to God. And we actually become the sanctuary after we have repented, sincerely repented for, from our sins. We've actually become the sanctuary. And we belong to him. So that's what this song is. is. So just pray for me as I try to minister. I've been captured by a love I can't explain. Now you have me, now I'm forever changed. I've abandoned everything I've ever known. I surrender, my life is not my own, I belong to you, I belong.
reminds me, it says, uh, I belong to you. And I was talking about Exodus 14, and I was talking about how the enemy was pursuing the children of Israel. And I said, the enemy is always trying to pursue someone that doesn't belong to them in the first place. 
You need to remind the devil as much as you can, I don't belong to you. My family don't belong to you. My money don't belong to you. My heart don't belong to you. My mind don't belong to you. Everything I got belongs to him. Now the Bible says in him I live and move and have my being. Everything belongs to him. He has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. It all belongs to him. I belong to him. The enemy hates it, but it is the Lord who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. To all who, as many as received him, as many as believed on his name, he gave the power to become the sons and daughters of God. I belong to God. You belong to God if you believe on his name. Amen. Thank you, deacon. Put your hand on yourself. We're about to pray. Say, I belong to God. All that I am, all that I have, belongs to God. Father, we thank you for the preaching moment. And we thank you for the ability to preach your word with clarity, conviction, and with power. I offer it up to you like the young man with the fish and the loaves of bread. Thank you for multiplying it and for making it more than enough and for making it satisfying to the need. We thank you and we praise you that it will stir up faith and strengthen the hearts of your people and even stir up the ability to follow and to walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe just to hear more. Brother Tyrone. Last week, if you were with me, and even if you weren't, uh, we were in Exodus 15. And we're going back there this morning, and we're going to expand a few of the verses. Exodus 15, verses 1 through 3. And then we're also going to read verse 6 and verses 12 and 13. Now, I gave you some homework last week, and I said, read the whole chapter. Now, I'm not going to ask who read it and who didn't, because I'm going to mind my business. But I did ask you <laughs> to read the whole chapter last week, because it would bless you. It would bless you. And it says, then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God. And I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You stretched out your right hand and the earth swallowed them. You have led in your steadfast love, the people whom you have redeemed. Yes. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. I want to continue from the subject this morning. Note to self. Yes. Note to self. Yes. If you were with us last week, did anybody take any notes to self? Yes. Amen. I did. I did. Last week, we began with the topic, note to self. I confessed at the beginning of my sermon that sometimes I talk to myself, wrestle with myself. But I should be encouraging myself. Because sometimes we need to make notes to self so that we are able to encourage ourselves. Our focus has to sometimes be adjusted 
So it's necessary for us to make mental and mind notes that I call note to self. Notes not just about our situation, that's easy. Not just about our circumstances, that's easy. Not just about our feelings, that's easy. But notes about our God. Here Moses and the children of Israel have just crossed over the Red Sea in a miraculous fashion. They have walked through with chariots and captains pursuing them onto what the text called dry land. To the other side, they saw God move things about and around for their preservation and their progress. I shared that a few weeks ago. This walk of faith revealed something about the children of Israel and about God. And if you would allow me, I want to continue this this morning. When I look back at the text this week, I noticed that the children of Israel were scared. But that doesn't mean that God's not going to show up when we do something scared. I need to remind you, some of you are walking through some stuff and you're scared. But I came to tell you that the text told me that just because you're scared don't mean God ain't going to show up. Sometimes I feel the effects of my circumstances. They felt the effects of the chariots and the captains and all those things. They see them walking. They see them. But just because you see some things don't mean that God ain't going to show up. Faith and fear can coexist in the same situation. They were faithfully doing what Moses told them to do and as God instructed, but they were still scared. So I know as Christians, we're supposed to say, I ain't scared. But the truth is, sometimes we scared. And faith and fear coexist at the same time. But just because there's faith there and fear there don't mean that God ain't going to show up. Fear does not cancel out the fact that God is not going to show up on my behalf. I'm just being honest for the honest people. Sometimes they're both in the same situation. But it don't mean that God ain't going to show up. Just because I hear something contrary. Now I'm talking to you now. Just because I hear something contrary don't mean that God ain't going to show up. Because the children of Israel heard the murmurings, the threats, and the insults, and the sounds of the chariot wheels and the captives. And it didn't mean that God won't going to show up. So just because you heard something contrary to what God said does not mean I don't care what you heard. It could be making noise behind you, in front of you, on the side of you, and even in here. It does not matter. It doesn't mean that God is not going to show up. Hmm. Because that's why it's important to hear the right thing. Because sometimes you have to try to put the other stuff on mute. They had to put that on mute so that they could hear Moses. They heard the chariots, they heard the captains, they heard the water, they heard all that stuff. They saw the water, they saw all that stuff, but they still had to hear what was going to produce faith. God told them to stand still and also to walk at the same time. It says stand still and then a couple of verses down it says and you want to walk through on dry ground. Stand still and walk. So sometimes stuff that God tells us don't make no sense. But it don't mean he ain't going to show up. Now see this is what I'm talking about real stuff. Some stuff you hear doesn't always make sense. you like how does this work? To, you told me to stand still. Then you told me to walk. This, 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 that. How is this stuff supposed to come together? It doesn't have to make sense to you. For God to do what he said. So I'm trying to tell you just because there's some things that seem contrary to the instructions does not mean that God is not going to do what he said. Note to self. Now I'm, I'm talking real now. Just because it seemed like you told me this and then now this. How do you Note to self. It don't have to make sense for God to do it. I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you what's in the text. It may seem contrary. God's still going to do it. My mind is limited. His mind is infinite. You ever talk to somebody who's smarter than you? 
I have lots of times. And stuff that they say don't always make sense. Don't make it not true. <laughs> because God himself, last week I focused a lot on saying God himself. It's good. Sometimes you get things through the preacher. Sometimes you get things through the prophet. Sometimes you get things through friends. That's great. But God is so personal that he will give you something personal. Even while I'm talking, some of you are getting downloads, are getting stirred. You're hearing the voice of God even while I'm talking. And I said that God himself is my strength. It is the as I strength, the A-Z-Z-I strength. I said it's the strength that allows you to be able to withstand the forces and the pressure of draining forces. It's also the strength that gives you the energy to keep going in spite of so that you will not end up a zombie, a vegetable. An actor, an actress with a mask pretending to be okay or pretending to be victorious. God wants the pretenders to sit down. He don't need you to pretend because he's able. God does not want us to be an actor. He wants us to be activated. And he wants us to be activated in our faith. Note to self, note to self, note to self. The text here shows me, as I begin to dig more into the strength that God gives, that two things are at work here when I look at verse 13. It mentions that God's steadfast love, which is also translated as his mercy in some translations, is at work for his redeemed, and you have guided them through your strength. So something that's at work is God's steadfast love. His unchanging love is present even in my unfamiliar and scary places. So even when I feel lost, God's steadfast love is there. Even when I feel forgotten, God's love is still there. Even when I've forgotten my place, God's steadfast love, even when I feel like I have no place. I'm talking about what the children of Israel were feeling. They felt like they had no place. They were caught in between with what they knew and where they were going. Anybody ever been in between, in that place in between? So even when you feel like you have no place or you don't know your place or you forgot in your place God wants me to tell you that he is still at work because his steadfast love is at work let me build my case so God has the strength it says it says God's steadfast love he has the strength to guide you through sometimes in my walking through I still need guidance through so what I want to encourage you is God told you to walk through, but he didn't say he won't go guide you through. See, now it would be one thing if I just had to walk through without guidance. He said, you walk through, I have the strength to guide you through. I didn't ask the children of Israel whether they had the strength. I'll give them strength. I just need you to walk. All you got to do is walk through. I'll give you the strength that you need to get through. You just got to walk through. Have you ever been riding with someone and you don't know where you're going? But they know where they're going. So you have to trust them and keep driving even though you don't know. So I'm reminding you in the text that we may be out here crossing over some places that we've never been before, walking through some situations, but we're still redeemed in the eyes of God. When you look at the scripture, it says God's steadfast love is leading forth the people who he redeemed. So what this place does is it makes us feel lost. It makes us feel like we don't have a place because we're in between. But what God wanted me to remind you this morning is just because you are in that place, do not forget you are redeemed. The Bible says, let the redeemed 
of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy who he has snatched up you can't forget I know I'm on my way somewhere and I don't have anything but a direction I don't even know my destination I know I'm on my way somewhere but I don't know exactly where I'm going but he said in the middle of that don't you forget that you are redeemed because the enemy wants you to forget but I have been redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus what does redeem mean I am valuable in his sight he put value back in me I am valuable in the sight of God I'm redeemed don't you forget I'm walking someplace I've never been before I don't exactly know what all my steps are but I know I'm redeemed I don't know exactly how things are going to end up except I'm going to get the victory but I know that I've been redeemed don't you forget you've been redeemed what does redeem mean you are valuable in the sight of God you're invested in he invested in you he put something in you the Bible says a treasure in earthen vessels you have an investment in you you are valuable he imputed something in you his righteousness for my sin I've been imputed God's righteousness because I chose to believe him and not the report of what I did I chose to believe that God had the power to not only invest but impute in me that's redeemed he snatched me from the devil I've been redeemed so not just that he put something in me he snatched me from where I used to be and snatched me from darkness into light he snatched me from hell's clutches he snatched me I've been redeemed he invested he imputed he snatched he rescued he liberated he redeemed don't you forget in the midst of your journey that you have been redeemed by the incorruptible seed you've been redeemed by the blood that will never lose its power you've been redeemed by the blood that still works note to self I've been redeemed put your hand on yourself and remind your redeemed self I've been redeemed I've been redeemed I may be walking by faith but I'm still redeemed I may not know every answer but I'm still redeemed I may not be able to see it all right now but I'm still redeemed I may hear chariots all around me but I'm still redeemed I may hear the sound of the contrary but I'm still redeemed it may look like it's not gonna work but I'm still redeemed thank you Jesus note to self note to self I'm still redeemed mm -mm -mm -mm. the text says his steadfast love is for those who he redeemed called me valuable called me invested in called me imputed in called me righteous snatched me out lifted me up took me through redeemed and did it in the face of the enemy how do I know it's in the face of because the Bible says in the New Testament the enemy comes to steal to kill and to destroy but in the face of Jesus said but I have come my God my God my God in the face of what he said but I have come but I have come to redeem you mm -mm -mm. note to self note to self say note to self I've been redeemed I dare you when you go home to write that out and say I've been redeemed I am redeemed I've been redeemed and I am redeemed. Who are you? The redeemed of the Lord. Who are you? Don't
don't call me by what you used to know me as. I am the redeemed of the Lord. And I need to tell somebody in here, redemption looks good on you. My God from Zion, praise ain't the only thing that looks good on you. But the redemption of God looks good on you. It looks great on you. Note to self. The redemption of God looks good on you. Besides being our strength. The text also says that God himself is our song. It says the Lord is my strength and my song. So God impressed on me to share this, and I'm not trying to uh, disrespect music, but I need to say what he impressed on me to say, that some songs stir our emotions, but don't exhort God. Some songs stir our emotions, but don't exalt God. We need the right song. Because <laughs> he's the right God. We need the right song for our right God. He said, some songs stir our emotions, but don't check the enemy. But we need the song that remind us and the devil where he is. Under our feet. Defeated foe. Redeemed Versus condemned, redeemed, condemned. Some songs, they have to remind us so we can check the enemy. So when Moses says in the text here, he says, God is our strength. God is our song. So he's saying the song needs to exalt God and it needs to check the enemy. We can't just rest on it stirring our emotions. See, things are too heavy. Things that we're dealing with are too much. We need to remind ourselves and to remind the devil where he is and where we are. Redeemed, condemned. Redeemed, defeated. So the text here, all of Exodus chapter 14 and 15 proves to me in my reading that the enemy's shenanigans, <laughs> I had to try to find the right church appropriate word, the enemy's shenanigans <laughs> provoke the protective side of God. The enemy's shenanigans. Let me prove it in the text. Because in verse 3, it calls God a warrior. A warrior is what it says. Other places, he's called a shepherd, a father. But here, he's called a warrior. Why is that important? Because he's not just experienced in battle, he's experienced in victory. When you get a warrior, they're not just experienced in how to fight, they are experienced in how to win. My God from Zion, I need to let you know. So when we say warrior, they are, they are experienced in winning. They didn't call him a fighter, they called him a warrior. See, you need to see the difference of the emphasis. A warrior does no battle, but they know victory. In the garden, that, that, that's our God. In the garden, it's recorded in Genesis. It said that the enemy would bruise the Savior's heel, but that he would crush his head. It was like bruise, okay. I got something for you, bruise and for more. I won't crush you. And then my bruising is only for the purpose of my kids. My God, from Zion. It is, he said, I was wounded 
and bruised and the chastisement of my peace was upon me so that by my stripes you may be healed. So the bruising he suffered was for our benefit. A bloody cross, an empty tomb, an exalted Lord. You need to see the, the sequence there. The bloody cross, the empty tomb, the exalted Lord, because he's a warrior. He fought differently and smartly just to get because he's acquainted with victory. They thought he was supposed to fight by coming down. They thought he was going to fight by saying stuff. He said, I don't got to say nothing. I came here to do what I'm doing. I'm a warrior. And see, you don't need a warrior who talks too much. You need somebody who's work and who knows whose actions know how to fight for them. Not a talker. He didn't have to talk it. Oh, my goodness gracious. He is our defense. He is our song. God is literally that consistent. And it proves that he is our song. And what is translated, song is translating our defender. Song means defender. Someone who defends us. So the illustration, I probably ain't going to finish this this week either. The illustration he gave me. I ain't mean for it to be a series, Elder. The illustration he gave me, there was a man, basketball fans know him, named Hakeem Olajuwon. Hakeem Olajuwon played in the NBA for over 18 years. And he has a distinction of being the champion defender. He had over 3,830 block shots. And his quote was this, and I loved it because it is ascribed to our God. He said, you get glory as a shooter, but respect as a defender. Oh, my God. <laughs> you get glory as a shooter, but you get respect as a defender. What am I trying to say? Because they saw him coming. They knew that everything that they sent their way trying to get it was not going to be received because they had a defender in their midst. You need to let the enemy know everything you shooting ain't going to get received because I got a defender in my midst. God is my strength. God is my defender. And although Hakeem Olajuwon had blocked 3,830 shots, I got to say he ain't nothing on God's record. When I think about what he blocked for me and for you, he ain't got nothing on our God. God is the champion defender. God is the one who blocked it. Why am I here? Because God blocked it. Why am I still standing? Because God blocked it. Why am I still breathing? Because God blocked it. Why am I still smiling? Because God blocked it. Why am I still praising? Because God blocked it. Why am I still walking? Because God blocked it. Why do I still know my name? Because God blocked it. Why am I still hopeful? Because God blocked it. Why am I still rejoicing? Because God blocked it. God blocked it. God blocked it. Only you know. Only you know that it was shot your way. But God blocked it. It was sent your way to kill you. But God blocked it, it was sent your way to cause you to lose your mind. But God blocked it, now unto him who is able, now unto him who is able to block it, now unto him who is able to stop it, now unto him. Oh, oh God. God blocked it. God blocked it. God blocked it. Note to self. God blocked it. The enemy sent. But God. Thank you. 
He sent it with God's mighty right hand. Blocked it. Till we continue, put your hand on yourself and say almost, but God blocked it. It was close, but God blocked it. I almost gave up, but God blocked it. I almost let go, but God blocked it. I almost lost my mind, but God blocked it. I almost died, but God blocked it. I almost throw in the towel, but God blocked it. I almost said no, never again, but God blocked it. I almost stopped preaching, but God blocked it. I almost walked away, but God blocked it. I almost let my tears rule, but God blocked it. He's my defender. He's my defender. Note to self, God is my strength. Say that with me, God is my strength. God is my defender. everybody. I'm getting ready to call for the deacons. Uplifted hands, everybody. You know better than I do the shot that was taken that was blocked by God. You know the shot know the shot you couldn't stop it but you had a defender on your team my God from Zion I couldn't stop it but I got a defender on my team God is my son the defender on our team. Hallelujah. He's the defender. Lord, we acknowledge you as our strength. We acknowledge you as our song. We acknowledge you as our defender. You, we acknowledge you as our help. We acknowledge you as our keeper. We acknowledge you as able. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. You have been our defender. So 
our note to self is we are encouraged because you are our defender. Whatever we're facing, you are our defender. On the road to what you promised, you are our defender. You are the defender against all contrary forces. You are the defender. You are the defender. Put your hand on yourself. Say no nope to self. No nope to self. I can't hear you. No nope to self. God is my defender. I'm done. I'll finish next week. After hearing that word, after hearing that word, after hearing that word, maybe you are not saved. And that means that you haven't accepted Christ as Savior and invited him into your heart. If that's you, he wants to be your defender. And so I ask you, we're pausing now just so you can hear the call to salvation. If that's you, come on and give your heart to Jesus. Come on and give your heart to Jesus. If we have one that's here in the sanctuary, come now. But if we have one who is virtual, Type your name in the chat. Is there one? Our second call. Maybe you're already a believer, but you need a community. You need a church. We need churches for other things other than weddings and funerals. You need a church to grow in the Lord. In community. That's why the church was set up. So if that's you, come now. If you're here, or put your name in the, in the chat if you want to join the church. If you came and responded to either one of those prayers, those calls, I have a prayer that I want you to repeat after me. Dear God, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. You said in your word, if I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that you raised him from the dead, I would be saved. I believe it and I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I am now saved. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for loving me. We will walk this Christian journey together. Amen. Welcome to the body of Christ. And welcome to the family of St. Matthew. You, you can do that one more time. Thank you for lifting us up, Lord. You lift me up. You are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like, strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. And it reaches. One more time, Sister Vincent, you are my strength. If it's your strength, I dare you to wave your hand. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. And it reaches to me. 
deacons, you can get ready. You are. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we prepare for our communion, we just thank God for being present. Hallelujah. Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made. And in the power, hallelujah, the power of the blood. This communion reminds me of back in the day when they spread the blood over the doorposts, hallelujah. Today we come, Lord God, spreading that blood over our, these temples that belong to God, hallelujah. And as we partake of his holy communion, hallelujah, let us not forget the power that's in the cup, hallelujah. Let us now prepare for our communion prayer of confession. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We are ready to proceed. The cups are open. Father, repeat after read on the that's up there, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Turn to your word in first John one and nine. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit in us. According to your word in Psalms 51.10, we count it down and for the work our lives that we be more like your son. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, once more, it's me once again. Asking you to bless the bread, which should represent your body, and bless the juice, who represents your blood. Kind of worthy, make up worthy, to eat and drink your body and your blood. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the precious Holy Ghost. Amen. So in Matthew's seventh chapter, beginning at the 26th verse, Jesus took this bread, gave it to you, his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take and eat. Hallelujah. And after he took, after he ate, he took the cup, gave it to you, his disciples. And said, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. Drink ye all of it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. Hallelujah. God with us. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah. There's power in the blood. Hallelujah. So much power. Break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees, with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. 
as the deacons are finishing up collecting the altar will be open for prayer for those people that uh, want prayer I was unable to touch everyone today or pray with everyone but if you want to have prayer the altar will be open at the close of service Again, I encourage you to read the 15th chapter of Exodus this week. For in it we find the testimony of the Lord to encourage a note to self. And by God's grace, we'll be back to note to self next week. If all hearts and minds are clear, we can stand. And with uplifted hands, our benediction will come from Ephesians 3 and 20 and 21 from the ESV version. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I declare that you are blessed and you're going out. You are covered. God is your defender. In Jesus' name.